Today's video is found in your new packet, your new packet that says Ratios and Proportional Reasoning, Unit 1B, Bar Modeling. This is page one. Put on your thinking cap. So, yes, I would like you to do this page on your own. Try it. It's a model way of doing some fraction work. Give it a good shot. Pause the video. Try these two que or three questions. Oh, it's two. Two questions, and then we'll go over them in class tomorrow. So now I'm going on to page two. Page two, problem of the day again. Grades one and two. This is very easy bar modeling page. It's for grades one and two. Yes, it is. Janice has nine pencils. James has five. Which is Janice's model? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is Janice's model, correct? And which is Jan uh, James? This is James' model because there's five of them. That's simple. Taking a rectangle and cutting it into equal parts. Carl has three more books than Kylie, which is Carl's model, which is Kylie's model. Well, which one is three bigger than the other one? Well, D compared to C, that's two bigger. C compared to B, that's four bigger, these four here, right? So that's not it. It's not that one. But if you look at B compared to C, Oh, there's three more here in A than there is in B. So Carl has three more than Kylie. This is Carl. This is Kylie. Larry has ten foreign coins. Leslie has seven foreign coins, which is Larry's motto. Well, now it's now broken up into parts. But I can clearly see that one bar, B, is longer than the other. So the B must be Larry. So we're just getting the basic idea here of drawing a picture that proportionally represents about what the question is talking about. So it doesn't really matter how long you make your rectangle, your box, or your bar, just as long as they're kind of proportional. Larry's should be longer than Leslie's. Max has five more candies than Martha. Which is Max's motto? Well, Max has more. So Max would be the longer bar, right? And Martha would be the shorter one. So very simple. Yes, you could do this in first grade. Neil has four fewer pictures than Nadia, which is Neil's motto. So he has fewer. So we're checking your vocabulary and math. So Neil has fewer. He's on the top. And Nadia's on the bottom. Next page. So the model method. What are the important features to emphasize in the model method? Well, the important features are the length of the rectangular bars should be drawn in proportion to each other as far as possible. Give it a best shot. The available information is recorded onto the models, and question marks are used to indicate, what do I not know? The unknown information. Letter C, different types of dotted lines are used when the models needs to be transformed or changed. So in the early grades, students can solve word problems such as the cupcake problem below by acting out the situation. Okay, uh, Henry, let's say, or whoever it is, has two cupcakes and Susie has three cupcakes. How many cupcakes do Henry and Susie have all together? You could draw the picture here as you see. Then you could just make it in little, uh, if you wanted to actually touch it, you could use those snap cubes or anything that you could put in your hand. Um, you know, it could be little pieces of candy. Here's two Jolly Ranchers, one, two, and then three Jolly Ranchers. How much do they have all together? Well, you know, maybe I just want to draw a box to represent them, the picture way. Um, because it's more it's abstract. It's not actually a picture of a cupcake. It's a picture of a bar or a box or a rectangle or a square in this case. So all together they have two. Oh, so we don't even have to show it in parts divided up as two and three. We could just make the two bar shorter than the three bar. And we know all together they have 
5. Next page, the part whole model. In the model method, rectangular bars are used to represent the quantity that forms the parts. The relative lengths of the bars help the students to see and understand the relationships between these two quantities. Part whole models may be drawn this way. So they can be drawn as a part plus a part makes a whole, or a part and then drawn underneath. So you could do it either horizontally across like this, or you could do them vertically like this. Part, part, and then there's the whole. And if you can't draw that nice curly bracket, don't worry about it. You could use hard brackets. And you'll see sometimes I do that. So here's an example, the children problem. There are 12 boys and 15 girls in this room. How many children are in the room all together? Well, you know, instead of drawing a person, I would say B for boys and G for girls. There's 12 and 15. How many all together? Well, in first grade, we would add those, and we would get that there are 27. You can use little tiny rectangles and divide it up into the 12 rectangles and the 15, but that's too time consuming. Cookies. Okay, here's the next one. Mrs. Lee baked a tray of 36 cookies and chocolate and vanilla cookies. There were 15 chocolate cookies. How many vanilla cookies were there? Well, now we know the total is 36, and we have one of the parts is 15. So if we subtract 36 minus 15, we'll get 21 vanilla cupcakes. Notice the question mark. What is it that I have to find? I have to find how many vanillas. Here's a books problem. So David made a bar graph, but accidentally tore part of it off. Uh-oh. Find the number of books David read in week four. Hmm. How can the height of the bars help us? Well, we can see that in week one, he read three. In week two, he read two. In week four, week three, he read four. And in week four, I don't know. But they do tell us, oh, they didn't tell us. Oh, it says right here. And I know your copies, and I'm really sorry about this. The whole packet, the bubbles and the people talking and the thoughts and the piece of information, ugh, copied too darkly. So you're really going to have to watch the videos, and I'm going to have to um, tell you each time what was in this bubble here. How many books did he read all together? Fifteen. So if I know that he's got three and two and four already read, and I subtract 15, take away three, take away two, take away four, or I add two and four and three, which gives me nine, 15 take away nine, oh, this bar must represent six. So David read six books in week four. Getting the idea here? So guided practice. I'm going to work some of these for you. And the Rico has traveled 11 miles on a 31-mile journey. Find the distance Enrico still has to travel to complete the journey. So you could do it horizontally and say, oh, 11. Well, I know the other part's going to be way bigger, so I'm going to draw 11 proportionally. Okay, this is my 11. How many more miles, part, part, but the whole, and again, if you can't draw this, you could just draw arrows like this. Some people like to do this and then put the 31 down here. You can't draw the curly brackets. It's the horizontal way. The vertical way would be, okay, he's gone 11 miles already, and he's going more miles, I don't know. And here's where my question mark would be. And all together, there's 31. So you could draw it vertically. And to get the answer, I'm going to do 31 minus 11 to get the 20, right? So Enrico still has to travel 20 miles. Two apples and a mango cost $4. Two apples and three mangoes cost $9. Find the cost of a mango. Oh, two apples and a mango. So two apples and a mango. So A, A, and M I'm going to use all together. This is $4. But two apples and three mangoes, well, that's going to be a longer one. So two apples and three mangoes 
Look, I need to make that a little bit longer. Don't be hung up on the pictures, really. So apple, apple, mango, mango, mango is nine dollars. How much is the cost of a mango? Hmm. Well, I know that two apples and a mango, this, and I'm going to use maybe a different color, this part of the whole nine is exactly the same as two apples and a mango, this four over here. So I know this part of my model over here has to equal four. And if all of it has to be nine, right, this part has to be five. So two mangoes, two mangoes equals the five dollars. So one mango would equal two dollars and fifty cents, or five divided by two, right? So the cost of one mango, two dollars and fifty cents. My label, money. Notice I'm not sabling this just because this is taking a while. We'll talk about that. And again, you may not be able to read in your packet what he's thinking of here. It says, oh, I think of three different numbers. So you may have to write this in here. When I add, so you might have to write on your paper, when I add the numbers up two at a time, I get 49, 57, and 64. When you add them two at a time, add two, two at a time. Sorry, this did not print. 49, 57, and 64. What are the three numbers? Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. So I know I have two of them adding to 49. So let's see. I know there's going to be a little number, a middle number, and a big number, right? Or a small, a medium, and a large. Maybe I could think of it that way. So I'm going to draw a little box, a medium box, because it says that there, there are three numbers. It doesn't say that they can be the same. So I'm assuming when you have three people, right, one person's the little one, one person's the big one, and then there's one that's in the middle, right? So I know to get the smallest sum, the only way I can do that is by adding the two smallest bars. And to get the largest sum, I have to add the two largest bars. So that's got to be the 64. So what does that leave? That leaves the small bar and the large bar to represent the 57, right? So let the numbers be represented by, hmm, so small plus medium must equal 49, small plus large is 57, and large plus medium is 64. So small plus medium plus small plus large, small, medium, small, and large, well, that's 49 and 57. And if I add that all together, I've got 106, right? Well, I know that the medium and the large, so the medium added with the large. If I add that, that's got to be medium and large. That's 57. So if I take my 106 minus my 57, Right? My 106 minus my 57. Oh, wait. Medium plus large is 64. I said that wrong. So if I take my 106 and I minus my 64, 
I get 42, which represents two smalls here. So two smalls equals 42, so one small must equal 21. So I know the small is 21, and then if I add small and medium, 21 plus what equals 49, that must be 28. So small is, small is 21, medium is 28, and then medium plus large, now I know 28, plus what will give me 64. Oh, 28 plus what will give me 64? 36. So my numbers must be 21, 28, and 36. There are other ways to do this, but that's just one. That's the beginning of bar modeling, and that's it for today.